jméno je Jiří Jaroš, pracuji tady na Institutu plánování a rozvoje. Dneska jsme se tady potkali, aby jsme se podívali na prezentaci našeho známého hosta, nebo zajímavého hosta, neznámý, taky to poznáte, toho, co vám bude ukazovat. Uh, Urban Talks je série, která se tady opakuje vlastně od založení kempu, zveme sem známé architekty ze světa, oni ukazují svoji práci, vy se jich potom můžete ptát, můžete se jich ptát na to, jak jejich práce začala, co je inspiruje, případně se jich ptát na jednotlivé projekty. A je to série, která nás docela baví, protože ku podivu ten zájem architektů je o to, aby sem přijeli, prostor se jim líbí a my jsme za to moc rádi, protože se od nich taky rádi inspirujeme. Jsem hrozně rád, že jste zvládli to těžké rozhodnutí neposlouchat venku Vladimíra Polívku na čtení a přišli jste se podívat sem za architekturou. Pro nás je to takový trošku boj s větrným mlínem, protože lidi jsou rádi venku, když už se začíná být trošku hezky, ale jestli se venku udělá ošklivo, třeba přijdou a nechají Vladimíra Vladimírem, tak uvidíme. No. A jak jsem říkal, máme tady známého hosta, tentokrát je ho z Francie. So, uh, let me switch to English. And uh, we have a special guest here. It's Umberto Napolitano, co-founder of Plan Architecture, uh, architecture studio, architectonic studio uh, based in France. So, we are here for his presentation, so I will give him a word and enjoy his presentation. Umberto, please, it's yours. Yeah, you that's have, better like that. You have strong voice, so. Okay, so I was saying thank you. I don't know if you get it. Um, so LAN means a local architecture network, and um, we started on uh, our own office in 2000, uh, between 2002 and 2004. We were uh, extremely lucky in the, in those uh, 15 years because we have done uh, more than 100 projects, extremely different in terms of sites, typology, place, client, situation. Um, this is the, the, the a diagram which shows the, the sites of the ongoing project, which goes from 100 meter square to more than 100,000 meter square. Um, I will present just a few of them, but as I said at the beginning, we have um, this uh, chance to to kind of learn for each experience. So that goes from uh, housing to office, to civic building, to theater, um, to uh, even sport facility, to uh, archives, to a very strange project in Germany, which has been done through a process that is called Baugruppen, like where everyone's vote for their own uh, wishes. Uh, we also have done a prison which we will finish in a, which is this one, we will finish in a month. Extremely interesting uh, as an experience, hotel and then a, a fire and rescue center. Um, and, and that goes on and on until the biggest project which is ongoing, which is the, the extension and the refurnishment of the Grand Palais, which is the biggest French museum. The office claim itself, totally European, this is a, a map that um, we update every year, which is kind of the territory of the studio. People come from all around Europe, and myself, I'm Italian, and I studied in France. My partner is French. So we try to increase this idea that uh, culture and experience can be uh, very positive, even in this moment where Europe is really challenged and questioning. Um, all, obviously, we build, but we try also to to um, uh, to learn and try to kind of uh, approach theory in a very uh, straight way. So we do research. We wrote. Um, I'm myself engaged with a few university. I teach in uh, Columbia and uh, in New York and in the AEA in London. So those are some of the book of the studio. We try to participate to all the experience we can do in terms of exhibition. We have been uh, uh, twice in the Biennale, one with Rem Kulas, exhibit one of our facade, and uh, the, the last one with uh, 
Alejandro Aravena, where we represented French to two different uh, social housing uh, projects. So this is a large view on the on the on the practice. And then and then the the, 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 the exhibition was in Chicago, the one we have done on Ausman. And I suggest, I mean, I have to advertise that. This is the last monography. So if you want, you can buy it. It's, uh, it's just uh, on uh, all the best bookshops. And the introduction of this, uh, of this uh, AV number it was brought from Luis Fernandez Galliano, trying to describe what we do. And he, I will not read it, but he shows up with one specific uh, sentence which was the project of, in the project of, in the land project, the form, fall of the form, then fall of the form. And all our work is probably about that, is about form. And I really believe that in general, architecture is about form. But form is a word that people use in a very different way. In our case, what we are really interested on, it's cities and forms or in other words, the forms of cities. So I will uh, just share with you what I learned in the first years of architecture when I was, which is a text of Aldo Rossi. And I will start the lecture from there. And then I, we will pass through three, four different experiences to understand what is this idea. So what I, I have to read here, the architecture of the city summarized the city form. And from this form, we can consider the city's problem. By architecture of the city, we mean two different things. First, the city seen as a gigantic man-made object, man object, a work of engineering and architecture that is large and complex and growing over time. Second, certain more limited but still crucial aspect of the city, namely urban fact which, like the city itself, are characterized by their own history and thus by their own form. What Aldo Rossi said, and I would invite all of you to understand that, that cities are an end made object. Men's built cities. And you can understand the city as a, with a very scientific approach. You just have to understand that cities as materials are static rules they have distances, they have geometry, they have form. So as an architect, the first things we have to know is how to read the form of the cities. So what we do in LAN is that we really work in this abstract uh, canvas, which is to kind of analyze, decompose, and try to understand what's happening in the city. And then there is a second level, which is even more interesting, and which char characterizes the fact that uh, architecture is first of all a politics act, is how do you go from that image to this one? How do you go for a very abstract system in a place which is a strong identity, which have a strong history? And so this second layer of fact, which is called by Aldo Rossi urban fact, is the most interesting. It's how economy has grown, which was the, is the political history of the place where you build. And so, Imagine these two things. The first one is a very abstract and scientific approach on forms. And second one is try to look around you and understand what was going on. And then when you make the synthesis, when you find the form of each of them. So the word form for me is something that we, I will share with you with the definition of Paul Klee, which was Form must on no account ever been considered as something to be go over with as a result, as an end, but rather as a genesis, grow essences. Form is, as a semblance is an evil and dangerous spectrum. So forms is not how things appear. Forms is a movement, is the beginning of something that will end up somewhere else. And that's architecture. Architecture is not an answer to a need, obviously as to, it's one of the first steps. We build because people need to be house to sleep, or we build office because we have to work, or we build church because we have to pray. But architecture is more than that. It's the moment where you go over, project means through something forward. So you go over and you, as an architect, you decide to answer a question that no one's asked for. 
So the architect has, first of all, has to find the question, and so, second of all, he has to create something that can move from one point to another during time. You know, when you do housing, look at this place. It was conceived to be something, and then we are today in a place which is used in a totally different way than the beginning. So the question that we have asked to ourselves is how you move from one point to the other, and which is the quality that you have to give to create this movement. So is what we try to do in all the projects. The first one I will show you, it's in Bordeaux, Begle. It's a place which is very, Begle is a specific uh, neighborhood very close to the train station. And it's a neighborhood which has been built uh, following the modern idea of city. In France, we call this system Cité. And uh, it's the place in Europe where in the, the shortest lapse of time, in 14 years after the war, during the reconstruction, they have built 14 million housing. 14 million housing in 14 years, following one model, which was the modern idea of city. Obviously, it's a very strange uh, situation because then colony and then the, the, the very complex political statement of France has made in each of them ghetto. And, uh, and if you take today the most 50 violent place in France, they are the 50, they come from the same urban model. I'm not saying that architects are responsible, but probably the politics and the architecture of that time give back this situation. So Begle was one of that. One of uh, where riots happened in, the, in 2009, where uh, you know the building were used, where literally you don't know where, what is public, what is private, and what is collective. And when you don't know what you can use, you apply very strange rules. The one that the, of the people that decide that they, they own that space, so, so you cannot go. So one of the problem of this modern city as it was applied in France is the limit, is the idea of where, what is mine or not, who owns that. So until this guy came, this is the president of the Green Party, he was the president of the Green Party, and then he became the major of this city, Begl, and he did two things. The first one, he connected the center of this city with the center of Bordeaux, and then he destroyed everything. And on that, on this explosion, on these ruins, he did uh, an international competition, which was won by a Dutch studio called Tan Tania Conco with an idea of city extremely simple. It's like all the historical center in Europe. Uh, a city, it's the public space is defined by the block. So the block is the limit from the public to the private. And the private is collective because it's owned by all those people that lives there. So building become block, block become masses big enough to define the street, to define the square, and it's exactly like Prague or like many other cities in Europe where you have this clear limit where the facade of the building, it's the moment where you know that it's outside and inside. And we were uh, asked to participate to another competition for these three buildings. And so the idea was that the buildings were big enough to define the void. So there was a strange pro uh, 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 a proportion between the void and the plenty part that has to be respected. Then the competition was on. It was 2018. Uh, we were allowed to build 14,000 meters square, but with differential crisis, they decided to cut into the program, which means that the, with a small single family house, one close to the other, you had the entire surface they asked for. So it was very strange because the city allow us to build that, but we were asked only to build that. And then city is one of the main uh, challenge that we face for the next century, is how to build dense to save land. If you build sand in one place, if you build dense in one place, you are saving land in another place. So there was this gray material, the possibility of, that for us was the place where the form could move. And we try 
to and the, the we were working at that time in the idea of how you can combine the quality of the single family house with the quality of the collective system so how you can make together something which is private totally which privacy where you have no neighborhood and in the same times decide to share resources like you share in a collective building to share the water to share the electricity to uh, to be more dense and we end up with this figure which was the beginning of this project the idea that there is it's a stock of single family house one on top of the other and every time you have an house you have the same void space so you have no neighborhood like direct contact of your neighbor you enter from the exterior so you have your own garden and then you have your single family house and this intersection point where the point you can where you can have a structure where you can have water where you can have electricity and blah 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 so we applied that to the blocks and to the land and it gives back this kind of building we were extremely young when we did that and they allow us to win so we won the competition but it was totally crazy because instead to pay one facade you had to pay, to pay four facade and instead in, in, in a building which is just seven meter large all the apartment they have the view on the street they view in their own void they view in the in the courtyard so on the paper is extremely expensive but we had literally a very low budget the idea was that the, the district was very he has a negative image so through those projects we had to attract people in this neighborhood which was dangerous before so literally the investor was like okay i will give you 1000 euro I, I don't know how much it cost here but it's like it's a very low budget for france and then and then we decide to double the space so it's very low budget with something that you should bid more so it was a nightmare so we spent like seven years to do it we started with a clear idea which was okay let's do like a parking uh, plot and then we work with module prefabricated that we can assemble together and then there is like a, a steel uh, system that protects the, the entire things so the three buildings are made with six modules and uh, each of them is used in function of uh, is that the toilet is this a bedroom is this a living room uh, but honestly the, the we we i mean part of the economy came from there but the other part was the fact that we decided to work with 60 different companies so we were like cutting price every time there was the guys that do electricity the what the guys that do just a part of the wi-fi etc etc so the the idea was those are documents from the competition this was 2015 and the idea is that people can build themselves the void during the time keeping the, the same image of the building so the buildings look like that so as you see we we build the facade and it's a sliding doors and every time that you you buy one apartment you have like the same surface here in a, in a void space obviously the typology are all different so th those are like the different sides and they are all made it in a very extreme as you you will see after we we take care of materials in general detailing etc but this one is just an assemble system of standard pieces so it was like how you can pay what you can pay which is the best price you can pay the best pieces you can have so the windows are very standard this is very standard the guard rail leave and we, we do not design nothing everything everything comes from catalog to get this space at the end and what is nice is the fact that we exhibit this project on the on the Venice Biennale and we were asked to to make a movie on that you can find online and so you, you know I don't know how much of you are architects but there is a very strange phenomenon when you finish one project then you give the keys and then you don't know in reality we are all liars you don't know what's happening in this building i mean at the end except if it's a public building and so we we said okay we, there is this space people will build but you never know if things happen so with the biennale we were used to do uh, we were authorized to film all these things and it's very nice because first of all 
uh, this offer allowed the building to be lived by very different people. You know, from the young guys that has no money to the old couple that still won't change district to the adventurous one, which, uh, you know, is ongoing and said, okay, I have this void, I can do something else, to artists that use it as a workshop. And they, there are very nice moments where they start really to build this void. This is the one that we exhibit. And, and it's the place where the, this form find itself the movement. W then, speaking about form, I was in Japan for, for work and I discovered one thing which is extremely incredible and which probably give us back this idea of the movement of the form. You know that the Japanese has kind of 100 different words to say form. It's exactly the same meaning for us, like if you translate literally, it will be translated with form, but for them, is in function of the movement of this form. So I will just show you, I found this very rare book in New York by chance, and, uh, and inside there are a few pictures of this definition, but imagine that you have form, there are family of form, you know, form of unity, form of continuation, union, collection, arrangement, enclosure, form of force, so structure and curve, form of adaptation, fluidity, natural, form of change, reduction, twisting, severing, and transfiguration. And there are a few pictures which are totally incredible. These are the form of unit, which allow you to understand this is form of openness, form of dilatation, form of expansion. So they have specifically the word to the movement of form. So what we try to understand as a European, the fact that you know the, the word form is uh, a genesis of something, in Japan they already get it. I mean, I'm not saying that they get things before us, but in that case, yes. So there is the form of binding, form of waving, form of matching, form of bracing, form of regroupment, superposition, form, and every time it's, it's a specific word, kazane, mori, Shirashi, I don't know if you eat Japanese kitchen, but you know, I finally understand what is a shirashi, you know, this thing with the rice and then spread the salmon on the top. It's just the gathering of the salmon means shirashi, scattering. And then uh, form of enclosure, so there is the form of the wrapping, tsutsumi, form of enclosing, kakomi, me, megurashi, the form which surrounds something, the form of encirclement. And I go over the form of force, which is tension, support, hook, spread, form of curves, form of adaptation, natural form, and form of change, which is forms that change in itself when they move, you know, the rolling, the rollet, the twisting, and you can go over and over of cutting, of tearing, form of difference, form of shading. And there is this di diagram at the end of this theory, which is very inspiring for me. The idea that forms are the, it's a network, it's, it's a point of a network, which is between idea, materials, hand, like the way we be, the way we engine, and purpose, an objective that you have to reach. So the, the solution of everything, like when you keep all, that gives back this idea of forms. And then, and then forms change with time and history and with climate and space. So this guy, diagram, I hope that is quite explicit of what we are trying to do with the office. What we try to do, those are forms that has to evolve stays, that has to answer to a specific condition of climate, and that has to represent some bet that you put on the future and some needs that are already there. One of the, so the first one I show you moves with the void. The movement of, of the form was in the void. But you, I mean, it's not always that you have this possibility to build something that uh, no, ask, no one's asked for. So the second project is in a very dense system, is in Paris. And Paris, as you know, is extremely expensive. It's in the last district which is ongoing. It's called Batignol, uh, which really looks like, so it's this point. They invite us for this uh, small triangle here. 
and um, and it's a very large piece of the city. That was the image which was at the beginning of old competition. Like the, when when they did the master plan, they imagined this one as a city. And when I saw that, uh, I mean, it looks like everything except Paris. So if we are honest with ourselves, this is the ecological city that we are building everywhere in Europe. Wherever you go, which is England, Germany, Swiss, you will find the same image. It's a city, a city which is planned on the paper, then they call different architects, and in function of the talent of each of them, you will end up with something. All this is around the idea that ecological, the ecological approach is translated by green. So normally you have a park, and then in the park, you recycle your water, you produce your energy, et cetera, et cetera. What miss there, what I think miss there, is the idea of identity. It's the idea of I'm specifically in the north of Paris. I can show this picture to one million person. You will not end saying this is the, the, the this is Paris. And Paris is a city which has very straight rules. It's a city that almost has been done in 60 years, between 1853 and 1914, by Haussmann and Napoleon. They have built 70% of the buildings in these 60 years. Everything gets 27 meters high. Paris is the densest city in Europe. Between the five densest cities in the world, Paris has the density of Shanghai. Paris in, Paris in the 11 arrondissement he has the density of Dakar. So it's very, very dense. It's twice dense than London without tower. So there is something magic in this city where people, where you don't associate the idea of density with the idea of the, the fabric of the city. And people live in a very strange relationship with the, the distances. Normally, you know, the void in Paris are very mature, that there is a, a very straight proportion. But I don't want to go there, this is another lecture. What is interesting there is that they have done all that through one figure. So those are the map that I just mentioned. Those are all the buildings which has been done between 1853 and 1940, which means 70% of the city. And those are all the streets built in the same period. It was under a specific project, driven by Haussmann. And, they, and what is incredible is that we did an, an extrusion of all the void of Paris. Those are just the courtyard, the street, et cetera, et cetera. And they look like a contemporary city. So there is a level of intelligence in the void which is kind of amazing. And everything has been done through what we called the Osmanian building. This is in, very interesting because it was the first investment building so people do not know who were the inhabitants. The family, they normally they build it through a loan and then they build it to rent it and through the rent they pay the loan. So the building is uh, very generic and uh, it has been thinked in a very generic way. And what this give back? Give back the fact that in one, in one century, those buildings that they were created to be housing, they have become office, theater, school, gallery, back to social housing, hotel, there is a level of flexibility in there which is extremely interesting. And that's Paris. Paris is an addition of this extremely intelligent building, extremely intelligent form. And when I saw this picture, even if there is just a street, you see that the building itself is the identity of the city. I show this picture, there is no church, there is no sign, and you know that you are in Paris. So on this competition, we studied this generic building, saying to ourselves, can we learn something and translate in a contemporary way? So the first thing we observed is the fact that the facade is made of 50% of glass, 50% of stone. And the, the story after is the fact that Haussmann imposed the facade. When you were there and you go to buy the land, they, they tell you, OK, whatever you do in the back, I don't care, but you have to use this facade and you have to use this right on the street, and you have to align this one to your neighborhood, and then you have to buy the pieces of the facade on this catalog. It was after the Industrial Revolution. So the facade is, is the most generic things you can imagine, and these generic things is based on the fact that through this right on window, 
you can have a living room, you can have a, a bedroom, you can have whatever you want to get the light outside. Then in the same building, you have like the ground floor is four meters, then you have 2.8, then you have 4.5, 3.3, and then you, you change high. And we all know that after the, the industrialization of the construction, now when we do housing, we do three meter floor. And when we do office, we do 3.6. So we do buildings that are mono specifically oriented in, in function. Those buildings, I mean, you can live as a student on the first floor, you can have a commerce on the ground floor, then you can have an office on the first floor because you have the high floor, then you can have an house, and then you can have a small house, and then you can have an addition of your house. So there is a volumetric offer which is extremely interesting. And then everything is made in a prefabricate, and, and it's a building which is very compact. And the structure is very understandable, like you know which is the wall that you can break or not. And then there is a trick where the ground floor is connected to the first floor without using the common stairs. And that allows the commercial space of the city to double its surface. When McDonald's has arrived, normally they take the first floor. If it's just like the, the, the local bakery, they, they stay on the ground floor and students live on the first floor. So this idea goes back and forward with the time. So it's very, like if you see, the ground floor of the entire city, and that's what gives activity back, it's very flexible. So we, and that survives those characteristics, survives to all the style, going from classics to Art Nouveau in these uh, 120 years. Everything was already there in those sections. Like they know from the beginning that the building is a tool that has to guest, I'm sorry, so sensitive, that has to guess different people and different function. And we tried to do that in a contemporary way. So we did a structure which is uh, just in the facade. The ground floor is connected to the first floor. And then we built a, a, a diagram with one only windows. And this window is calculated like an office building. So you have this module of 1.5 that you repeat. And then through that, we changed the high of the housing and, and we propose that when we needed a, lo a lodger, you just had to move your windows back. So it's a very generic system, made it uh, to be a now office or an office house. And, uh, and that was uh, the diagram of the competition we in, a, in a office way, housing way, or, or vice versa. And we radicalized that using one system in facade where you find everything in facade. So the facade is prefabricated. You have inside, you have the water, the electricity, the evacuation, the hair, the sunscreen, everything is there. And it's made it in this concrete system where, so if people arrive in 20 years and they want to change something, they have just to refer to the exterior wall to know from where things come from. And it's really like a Lego that gives back this building. But by the fact that it's a triangle, it become Parisian because we have this kind of particularly shape in Paris of the corner building. Typology are very different because there are no structures, so you can do what you want. And even if it has been thinked to be nothing, neither housing or office, the houses are very interesting inside. So this is a section in 2055 hoping that those things happen. So I asked to myself then from where did come this passion for forms in movement? And uh, I remember Brancusi said that every sculpture is a, a form in movement. And for us it's more like oh, every architecture is a form in movement. And I remember when there is, there's, to understand what I was saying, I just picked up a few images of the place where I come from, which is close to Naples. And you know, we were used to do something, I don't know if you do the same here, but we, when you build up an house, you left over the, just the steel going outside, hoping that one day your child will build a next floor. So this idea of uh, answering a present condition and preparing the future is probably the base of everything in architecture. It's really like, it's the moment where 
you are in the right position is the moment where you think about something that has to happen. How do you choose a form? Then when you get the point of what is a form, how do you choose it? All those glasses of champagne are really, I mean, I would like one. <laughs> but, um, um, and I was thinking, one thing that we should know is how to read form. I really love one Japanese uh, photographer that has spent his entire life on revealing form. And there is Matisse that's saying, to understand that, he said, we want something else. We work towards serenity through simplification of idea and form. The ensemble is our only idea. Details listen the purity of line. Details listen the purity of line. And arm the emotional intensity. We reject them. As an architect, it's very complicated to say that we reject details. But the entire things in architecture, I mean, the architecture I believe in, is the idea that you solve the details in the way you will not see it anymore. Techniques are, whatever is the complexity of the techniques, they have to be done in a certain way to disappear and, and let appears only the form. When the form is there and you understand it, you know how to use it. And so this Japanese photographer has done a series which is one of the most beautiful series. There are, there are three by three normally, the picture. And all iconic buildings or not, but building that has this uh, familiarity, this strong form. So his name is Sugimoto. And you can, he here, you don't see the materials. You don't see the details. You even don't see which is the scale. But you know that this is the Sydney Opera. And you know that this form works in a very specific way. So one of the exercises I ask to my student every time is blur your eyes. If you can still see the project, means that the project is good means that something comes from that which has not to be explained. And, and I really love that. This is the, the Colosseo Quadrato in Rome, the Fansworth House. Look, I mean, it's, everything is there. You can even not see the image, but you can see the project. Le Corbusier. I mean, it's one windows, four columns, and the stairs. Nice. Peter's Dunthor. A sunset in the sea. It's very nice. So the next project is about that. It's about how do you create a form which goes over everything and which become part of a, a landscape, which become a, a kind of an archaic type where you don't have scale, you don't have nothing. This is literally one of our first projects. And it's uh, in Bur. Bur, it's um, uh, like, really like nowhere. It's like the, the most forgotten place in France. It's dead, you know. It's a village of 80 people. And the closest neighborhood is Sodron, 120. And Mandarin Barnois, which are like 180. So the total area is like 300 people. And like Prague is just that, you know. So imagine how far are those people from the other. And the project is in the middle, and it's the national archive of all the French nuclear documents uh, of the document that the, of the nuclear French production. So it's like paper and microfilm, everything explain how you can produce nuclear. And uh, the landscape is that, the most boring things in the world. Like, you know, it's really like, it's even flat. And the competition was organized by EDF, which is the world largest producer of electricity. So when we did that, I was, uh, I was probably, I don't know, 30, 29, something like that. It was really our first big competition. And, uh, and we were supposed to be the young that lose the competition. 
And, but the competition has a paradox, a strong one, like, okay, those guys, they produce all the 85% for, for of their energy through nuclear, and like 8% to renewable, to for gas, and et cetera. So EDF is dead, but all their communication is dead. And so in this balance, they asked for a building, which has to be an example, like the build that consume less in Europe, which has to be extremely virtuoso, like express some value, which goes with the, the climate change and with the economy on energy. But an example that no one has to see. So you have to do a big effort to make an example, but they were scared of Greenpeace, of everyone, so they were like, could you please do a building which is maximum one floor? And you know, this is a storage. So a storage is a place, that, so, so then we get into the competition, we did like we do every time a research. In the history of archives, you will never find one only archive of one floor. Because the, 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 the base is simple. I mean, you have to go fast in, in, and you have to protect it. It's normally an archive is a cave, you know. You don't need, uh, you need a specific climate, 60 degree, you need a specific humidity. So more compact you are, more you gain in efficiency. So once you do a one floor building, you have a roof which is huge, so you have to insulate and blah, blah, blah. So the, the story shows us that, but then you go further in this story and you discover that the Mormons, they have made all their money on archiving things. So to, they, they have the software, the shelves, they normally they have company that runs archiving for museum or archiving for company. So you will understand that the real knowledge of, of archive is those guys in the Utah. So in that time, um, I had the possibility through a friend to go in the, in the you know, this Sundance, uh, this Robert, Fe Robert Redford Festival movie, which is in Salt Lake City, Sundance, hyper cool. If you have the, cho the choice, go there, which is very close to the mother of all the archive, the genealogical Mormons archive. So the genealogical Mormons archive is the archive where the Mormons archive themselves. So all the DNA, the ADN, all the information they have in their own people, they are there. And there, it's a mountain, emptied in the middle, where obviously you cannot enter, the only three doors are there, and they, and it's the most like it's the if we have to go on the base of a typological approach, this is the original type. It's the the mother of all the archive. So I were there for this, which is where which was very close. Then I visited the archive. Then I was back in France, and I said to everyone in the office. I mean, we were three at the time. Uh, to everyone, we should. We should do something more compact. We should do uh, something which is a box, very, very large, very big, et cetera, et cetera. So we start, anyway, when you, are, when you are young, you don't have any chance to win a competition. So just try differently. So we say to ourselves, okay, the other, they will do that. So let, let's try to propose something. And those are documents of the competition where we showed in a very pedagogic, pedagogical way to the client that it was extremely interesting as a form because you gain energy. So with the same net floor area of 7,000 meters square, in the terrace morphology, we had 11,000 meters square of uh, envelope surface, which means the roof, the facade, everything you have to insulate. In a five uh, floor building cube, you had clearly the half, 5,000 meters square, which means that in terms of energy, without doing nothing, you cut your bill in two. This was the first diagram we showed. Then we showed the fact that we take a guy, moving things inside, doing two, two trip in a week. He was like doing at the end of the mounds 12 kilometers and the other one three. Basic, it's elevator, but it's very useful when you explain that to a client. And then this was a, a bit tricky. We showed that a, a terrace morphology where well, it was very large, so it arrives close to the street in a very present way, and then the other one was very small because it was far and compact. Totally false, but you need it. 
But the real thing here is that really that you gain the entire land. So gaining the land means that you can probably do something else. So we decide to treat the water. And so through the natural slope of the side, the, the water of the building enter here into the, the root of the plants, it will be reinjected in the building once it has been cleaned. And you can imagine that all the network in this very nowhere place, it's very complex to do. So we did that, and then we start to, to say to ourselves, okay, but we will lose it, so can we do something that disappear? Can we do something that change with the weather, with the sky, with the, the grass? And we came all, so we decided to do a box, to move out of the box the, the office, and make it underground with a garden on the top. And then everyone came with the same image, very basic, very naive, saying, okay, let's do a chameleon. Let's do a these animals that change the color in function of the place where it is. And, and we li literally, imagine how stupid we were, we literally start to study the skin of the chameleon. And you end up saying that there are parts in this skin that change the color and part that stays, so it's a game of pixel. And uh, we say to ourselves, okay, let's play with two materials, one which is, which is mirror, so it's a chrome steel, and the other one which is concrete, which has to represent this heavy system coming from the ground. And we showed up with those image on the competition showing that the building, you know, could take the green from the from when it's green, could become white when it's white or greenish. And uh, that was an image showing like the details of everything was real and blah blah blah. And we won the competition. And we won the competition and that's the building. So it really looks like the image at the end. But we get it because, and we, we patented this facade. But we get it because the first thing I did when, I, when we won the competition, I called the client and I said, we have no idea how to realize this facade, literally. And it has not been done before. So it was, and that this is something that I really learned because you know everyone asks for an architect to know everything. I don't know how many of you are architects, but when you go in like in a friend place, and there is like a water problem, they turn on you and say, do you know how to do? You know, like you are a plumber or an electrician. They, I mean, you should know everything when you are an architect. So the things I learned in this first experience is that sometimes we, we just have to know how to say, I don't know. Actually, you know, I don't know. And our job is not to know everything, but it's more like to make all the energy of everyone going in one direction to, at the end, reach the image that you have in your head before. So in that case, the client was very like engaged and he gave us the possibility to split the team in two. One part of the team was doing like plan, sanction, uh, section, all the things that you need. And the other team was just on facade. And we spent a lot of time. And I will show you the production. This is a, a panel of concrete which is 18 meter high, the biggest in Europe with 120 studs in the, in the panel without no, re, no, like no logic, so there are no repetition. Each of them has a, a straight position, which is the translation of the trees that was very far in the back. This is the client. And I, I will show you a movie just to produce one panel to show you how complex and epic it was. So this is the table where we moved one pallet. So you have to imagine things will appear very, uh, very literally simple, but we did 1,200 prototype, prototype. So each of them, this is a stud, a chrome stamp. The position is given by a laser on the roof, which said where they have to go. This is a glue because we cannot sew it. So, or you lose the chrome, and each of them, you have two film, one to pass the stud, and the other one to protect it when you move it. So we ask to the village around if we open up a position, say, do you want to come and, and, and put the studs? No one's come. <laughs> and then the concrete, it's, uh, he has a property of self-cleaning, so there is a specific uh, materials based on potassium inside the concrete that kills all the, the, um, the organic uh, life and is colored as the ground. 
or something else. And then the second part of the concrete, it's like gray concrete. So then the one film stays there and the other stays on the start. And then the power tunnel moves and goes uh, to kind of dry the concrete. So then we decide to um, to work this surface with a high pressure mix of water and sand. The idea was to lose the traces of the techniques, to lose the scale, and to give up the stones in the concrete. So with that, we just open up the surface. Like here, and you can see the stone that come from the same ground of uh, the project. And then with an high pressure, we, you can see how the start start to work. And everything is exactly in the same level. So when you put your end on, you can just feel the texture between the one and the other, but it's exactly the same surface. Obviously, the guys that do that was in the other part of France, the only one that can do it. So each two panels, they were, they cross the nation going from east to west. And even the tools that you have on the construction side, they were enabled to move those panels. So everything you see in red, we had to design specific for this uh, project. And then it's like a normal uh, facade except that it's thick. So you, you put there and you, you, like you hide it. And you know, as I say, this is a box which has no relationship with the exterior because of the temperature and everything. And all these things has been done so you will have, uh, I mean, the, the client was totally happy, so he, he, he put camera everywhere. So you will see like an accelerated 12 hours on the side, where you see what's happened with the facade, which goes until the night, seeing different light inside those space. And so it, we were over and over, well, this is the fire doors, which is exactly the same materials, the same system. And you can just recognize because of this red uh, thing. The limit of the site, you, you imagine that it's very secure. So there is uh, like a fence. And we use this English system that, you know, is called AA. And they invented it because they were used to work. They follow down and say AA. And then you find the, find the fence in the plants. And as you can see here, you, you cannot see. The idea was to reach this level of abstraction where you cannot see that is a site, that is something going on. Even the, you know, it's exactly that. It's, you can even don't know which is the dimension of the building in function of where you are. And then you see the office. And you know the question this project asks, and even when it's in activity, Everything is underground, so from the street you cannot see what's happened. And I have to say that it's in activity only five days at, uh, uh, in a year. So all these things is for five people working five days. And so you can ask to yourself, is that architecture something which has a function but does not a uh, uses? And we go over, so you enter here, you have like a patio with water, and it's very nice because the light comes from the facade going the water and it gives back here in form of shadow. All the office going outside on the country. This is the fantastic terrace for these fantastic five guys, five days a year. Those guys. And then the storage. 
And the funny thing is that when we, as, I, I mean, as you see, this video is from 2010, so it's nine years that I say the same history, but it's very nice. And I, and I suggest that if you ever pass by those plates, you go there at six in the night. And what is nice, because these three villages, they have nothing to do in their life. Imagine these 100 guys. So when these things arrive, it was re really like a new object on the, you know, on the middle of nothing. So the, the landscape designer, one night, he called me and he said, like, Umberto, you should come and be there on the sunset. And what they do is normally they come on the street. It's the only place where you can see the sunset. And there are like 100 people, or there are all those people around that bring other people just to see the sunset through the facade of the building. And it's very touching. Like, it's a piece it's of form, which at the end, he has been conceived to be totally something else, but he has become a Belvedere on, on a virtual landscape, which is not even there, because the light come really from the opposite side. So as you, abstraction is one strong idea. How do you can make things that reveal the forms without losing your mind in small details? So there is, I even don't have the translation but Aristotle said something very interesting that you cannot say that anymore today, which is that the materials desire the form as a complement in the same way a woman attracts a man. So it's totally anti. But this idea of female, male, this idea of uh, a strong complaining between uh, the form and the materials is something that we search through. So I just will show you a few projects where this work is really done, whatever is the scale. The idea that the facade and the materials, they have a specific role to reveal the form. So those are pictures of our project. This is a refurnishment. It is uh, copper and, and, uh, and, and glass. The one you already seen, social housing. And every time you have this, you don't know which is the scale. So we land, so as I said at the beginning, we have, we have done many different typologies, but now more and more we are used to build a district or part of the city. So what we learn for each experience has become finally uh, all together in project that we think urbanity as something which has to be designed or decide. And this experience, we will end it in uh, two months. So it's a very new district in Nantes in the island of Nantes, which was an industrial place. And it's very known in France because where they start, where the activity was uh, ended of all this industry, they start a, a very strategic way to rebuild the city. Before architecture, before urban planning, they brought art, they brought those machines, and they made the island a touristic place. So, one million visitors every three months come on this island to go on this horrible machine. But that works very well. So we, that was the beginning. They brought before the economy, and then from this kind of recycling life, they decide to rebuild the island. And we had to build with this thing going on. In our side was this one, which was the next industry of toilet here on the river, very nice, in the middle of two, is, which is this, in the middle of two very different typology, like a, a, an idea of city, like a modern system, you know, those lines of building, and a block system where you have courtyard and, and the building outside. So we decide to use the project kind of to complete this system, and everything has been generated. Obviously, there is the river, Obviously, there is this one, which is a very strange idea of urbanity. It's more like a peripheric system that the heart of the city. There is this one ongoing that we don't know what will be. And this one, which is uh, an office made it in the 90 in a system of courtyard. 
So the project is like, can we take the, the, the river from one point to the other? And then can we build as a feedback of what is already there? The idea was, can this district become the pieces of the puzzle that put together these two very different moments of the urbanization for this city? And so, as, as you see here, there is like a moment where there is a square, which, which the distance is high because the building is very high. Then there is these two gardens go inside a small square, then there, et cetera, et cetera. And everything is thinking to be public. Because the, this district exists because there is a school, there are students, there is an hotel, an office, so there is a lot of function that were supposed to be there. And all this network of public space, they have different functions. So there is the main square, the student garden. There is this intersectional point with the, the garden on the other plot. There is the domestic play ground. And there is the office garden. Everything is this new street. And this was uh, a step, intermediary step. And that is now. I mean, this is an housing building where each floor is two windows. So you have windows on the river and you have windows on the front with this uh, metal system that slide and you can open it. The idea was to create an icon for this new district, which complete the space between which the things that were already there, which takes a moment of reflection which is here, and then those are the other verticality. And so the funny thing is that we learn, we have done this black building, the aluminum one, then the yellow one, and then another one that you will see later. And then we work it as a urban coordinator of other architects. And so we, see, we, we set up together rules to design the important things that we supposed to be fundamental for this part of the city. And the important things was the void. The idea was how do we define a void between three different buildings. So that is the street. This is the parking plot for everyone. So all the district, they park here. And there is a, a student housing on the top. And there is a level here where you really have another city. Like all the buildings are con visually connected in a 20 meter high. Like this one too. So all the public function of all the buildings, they were in this specific uh, high. Like from here, you can see the others. And from here, this is the, the student courtyard, you can see the others too. The social housing, same things, divided in two with two different scales. The playground, which is ongoing. Eh? This is a bit uh, sad, but it could be better in one month. The urban profile. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. It was really, really good, really great. I enjoyed it. It was really interesting, uh, especially the mirroring facade. It's, it's uh, I've never seen that before. It's really, really interesting. Uh, you mentioned the density before. Uh, the pa Paris is the most dense city in Europe, or one of the most dense cities. Uh, in Prague, it's a huge topic for us. We talk about density uh, all day long uh, because of brownfields and because of uh, because of uh, transportation. Uh, do you think it's possible to uh, rise density of the city if it's not natural to Prague? Because Prague is not that dense as Paris. I mean, the the point is what we have learned through um, through the past, especially from the modern, 
is the, the, the idea that city has already have a period where it grows horizontally. You know, we are, I don't know how is Prague outside, but whatever is the city you take in Europe, the city normally occupy the, the it's like a movement that bring the city outside the city in itself. And that little by little, the, the we consume all the ground. So since the, for me, the big question is different. It's uh, since the, the, the Rio Convention, since already 20 years, we all agree that there is a problem with the planet. We, I mean, we all, uh, except Trump and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Korea, North Korea, we all know that there is something weird going on. So from, and buildings are, uh, I mean, the built part of the city are probably one of the biggest cause of that. There is the pollution, but there is also the pollution coming from the urbanized system. So wherever you bring the city, made it in a small village or made it there, you bring something that pollute and something that occupy ground. So we call that the depth, you know, these things that we have to give back to the heart. And density is one of the tools that we have. Instead to occupy other land, we have to know, and we because there are a few examples which works really well, Paris is one of that, we have to know how to be dense and how this density could be a quality more than a problem. The problem of the density that he has, uh, uh, there is a fantastic study which has been made by the Zurich Polytechnic of how people feel density. And the funny things is that without knowing if a district is dense or not, if you ask, sometimes a very low density is perceived like in a very high density by people and vice versa, a very high density system is perceived like a very bringing quality with him. And so the question of how learn, how to manage, how to make quality with density, for me, we have to be dense. There is no question on that, especially capital, especially city, especially urban system, which are already there where we have uh, common transportation where we have services that when we pay taxes to make it good and to share things, those particularly shared territory, they have to be dense. So the point is how much dense and how to make from density something which, is be, which has been not done before and something which could be extremely qualitative at the end. So this is the challenge, I think. This is the big challenge of the next uh, generation is how you can escape the image of tower verticality, how you can escape all this nightmare linked to density and try to understand that whatever we build, we can study it and we can understand it and we can make it better than it was or we can try at least. Yeah, I, I agree because I think the relation between economics and density is uh, very important and the explanation of the density to people is, on, is important too, it's, uh, it's the same. Uh, uh, I didn't mention that we have a chance to ask questions, so we have a mic there, so if any, anyone wants to ask questions, if you want to ask Umberto about his work, you have a chance. Yeah? Someone raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. Uh, you had uh, this really nice analysis of uh, Paris buildings uh, where you had the different floor height, but in your design you used the same height in the building. Why did you choose that? Uh, I can you repeat? I just didn't yeah. I, I, uh, so in yeah, the building in, in Paris, what did I miss from the, the ancient technology? In the, in the analysis? Mm -hmm. You had the different height in the floors. Okay, so yes. No, we had it. Uh, the ground floor is very high. The, the first uh, level is uh, higher than the other. And then the other are 3.3 uh, meter high, which is um, an hybridation between housing and office. So we try to get the best, like 4.5 meters in the ground floor with different level of the ground. Then the first floor, which is 4 meters, and then 3.3 uh, 3 or 3.4, the other level. 
So and and that's if you go now, it's very interesting because the first floor it's uh, out housing out uh, commerce, and at the beginning it was all housing. So the things are already changed just because the, the guys from the car said he has more money than the guys from the housing. But the, the possibility of expand that, I think it's a very interesting. Thing. Uh, another question? That one? Uh, you mentioned the Hausmann, Hausmann uh, building, Hausmannian building. And uh, when, I see, when I see Barcelona, there is uh, also some pattern. Some some great uh, is it the same example of uh, building a city in few years? Uh, what is really different in Barcelona is uh, yeah there is the block. Uh, you are mentioning the Cerda plan. Uh, the corner are very interesting, but the, the courtyard in the block is huge. And what has happened in Barcelona that is it's nice because in this moment they are they are doing a, a urban experience which is called the super block, uh, and they have put it together four block. Uh, make it in the pedestrian and uh, w what's normally happen is that with the time people has built it in the block so think about i don't know the rcr uh, kindergarten the those the the prado or there are many projects which are there was too much space inside that has a law to have a reserve of density so what's happening in barcelona is a bit the opposite of paris like the block was the limit with the street, that's the same. But then into the block, the courtyard was huge, and in this courtyard, they start to build on it. In Paris, because everything has been done through demolition, the, the, the horrible things of Hausmann is that he, he was really abstract. He said, okay, let's put together Opera and Republique, make a straight line. And, and he demolished whatever he found. He demolished the house of his mother to understand how, how uh, sick was this guy. But he, he broke everything and then he rebuilt just facade. And that gives back a, a strange pattern, which is in the middle, a middle-aged city. So the center was made it on uh, uh, leftover of these mid middle-aged fabrics and the new city. And that's very irregular. You know, uh, you, you told me that you were in the exhibition that you have done for Hausmann. Because after the building, he has become a book, and then he has become an exhibition. And then I, I, I used it the, the, with my yeah, students. It was 2017, that's the year of the uh, foundation of camp. Congratulations, uh, just two years. And, uh, Thank you. And, uh, the, um, and we analyzed all the blocks in Paris, all, all of them. We developed, uh, we developed, I mean, we paid someone that developed the software, and through this software, we put inside the entire fabric, and it's amazing. The block in Paris has uh, it changed forms, so you have from uh, three-phase to eight-phase uh, polygon. It changed sides. You have blocks of uh, one building, and you have blocks of three kilometers. It changed uh, uh, period of construction, but at the end of the end, all the blocks they have the same density, exact the same density which means that it's very fractal as a system, and this is unique. There is no other city where you, you will find that. The idea that whatever is the part of the, of the city that you pick up, that drives exactly the same value of another part. They have exactly, in, in density-wise, they have exactly the same density of another system. It's, it's amazing. And it's just, it was even not planned. It was just a succession of uh, things that make this one happen at the end. For me, it was the first time I have heard about density at all. And for me, it was uh, really surprising how good the explanation was, because the models and uh, visualizations were very, very exact. It was really nice. Yeah. Uh, do we have another question? Someone? Yeah, there. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I want to ask, uh, I've met you in Paris some 12 years ago. And uh, the time you were beginning, I guess. And uh, since then, you, your office developed greatly. And I get, <laughs> and, uh, fat. And I get fat and old. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my question is about the development. Uh, and you, I think you mentioned that uh, most of your work is through competitions. And how is your experience with the competitions? Like, if, you're, if it's all your projects are, come from that, 
and also because well in Czech Republic we struggle a little bit with competition still so so how also how is your experience that the projects that win the competition are finished because what you showed us is you almost is the copy the reality is the copy of the visualizations maybe so if it goes like this uh, easily um, yes by the way uh, thank you because I, I'm here because you suggest my name Sorry. <laughs> but You're um, welcome. Uh, no, we still uh, we haven't uh, received one phone call from whatever is the, the client. So all the, our projects are uh, are uh, coming from competition, and uh, and I like that. I mean, we have done two different. No, we have done twice two experiences that were not competition, and that end up very badly <laughs> uh, because the difference with someone that call you. And someone that select your project, it's that you, they they want it. When they when you win a competition, they have been a jury, they have selected this specific project. So it's not about the architect; it's about the project. When you and I don't know if everyone is like that, but uh, my, my sensation is that when someone hired me, I work for him. When and that's that's good. I mean, if you know how to deal with that, but uh, because I have this uh, very uh, strange respect for architecture, for me it goes over the client. I mean, those two times I remember I sit with the client. I say, you know, you will die, and my building will stay. And he and he look at me like, are, are you saying me that? I say, yeah. And but making people understanding that. And that's very strange. I mean, that you understand that what we build, not we land, we as a society, it's not only something that is related to present, but it's a legacy, and it's a city, and it's the image of the collectivity. I mean, it's very complex to do that in a one-one relationship with someone that pay you. So I really love the idea of uh, having all the projects with competition because I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to deal with the, the idea of, I mean, then I'm sure that they are illuminated private client, uh, but I prefer that instead to select us, uh, because then when, the, when also when they select you, they have seen your work and kind of they want the same. I remember I get one from call, one phone call once, uh, I was very, it was in this period, the period where I met you, and, and, and it was like, um, hi, uh, we are calling you uh, to make a tower, I was like 27, 28, uh, to, to, to make a tower in Beirut. And we were used to make this joke between me and my friend, architect friend, and I was like, uh, uh, can you give me Stefan? And the guy said, who is Stefan? Ali, can you give me Stefan? Uh, and I spent like five minutes going back, and she said, so scared, you know, she said, no, no, I'm serious, I, I'm calling you because I've uh, seen one of your projects in, in a newspaper, which was even not a project, it was just a 3D, and we would like to build the same in Beirut. And so I, m I, m I met the guy, and it was amazing. Like, I, I, the story was that he was kind of a sheikh, uh, and he made me a dritz, uh, and, and so he came with the page of the journal and said, can you build that in Beirut? And I said, no, but I can do better if you want. And, uh, and it, this was for Paris. I mean, they, and then I started to, to play the game. You know, like, they have no money in Paris. Let's do something else. And, and, and it goes like that, but then at the end, uh, the war starts and the project was done. But this idea of someone asking for a language or someone asking for a, a specific project I mean, uh, luckily, I prefer the way we had, which was competition. But uh, uh, is the competition uh, right? Yes, we should do more and more competition. Yes, we should. Uh, it's the only way young people can work. It's the only way they don't ask you, um, have you already done an housing? Uh, I mean, if no one's give you the first possibility, how do you start to do uh, something? And so competition is one of these things that is very useful. I don't know how does it work here. So uh, we are talking about the project viewer. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it was interesting that you said that you did something different that you were supposed to. Uh, you were thinking out of the box and the result was the box. And uh, is that your secret weapon that you think, do you think differently or this was the, just a single experience? No, I think all the projects are very specific. Uh, then you can end up with the same language or similarity, but there are stories which are, uh, uh, I mean, it's even uh, the only way you make, uh, it's one of the way you make this work interesting, is the fact that through a pro the project is the doors through what you discover an entire world. So uh, now I'm finishing, I go back tomorrow because I'm finishing uh, a building for a pharmaceutical company in Ljubljana. You know, I mean, uh, I've been in Ljubljana a few times to do lecture, but it's um, it's it's very nice because I discovered things and things and things, and and so that discovering make each story very specific, and through the the narrative that you decide, this urban fact I said at the beginning, is the interpretation of the reality. It's what makes the difference between an architect and another. I mean, if you see. It's so nice because uh, if you see how people present their, their own project, there is this moment where they decide that a specific thing is the most important one. You know, a very, like if you ask to Zahadid, she will tell you that um, this is a specific moment to represent a fluid architecture or a movement or a, a, a relationship with the non point of view that decide is, is the most important one. If you ask to Renzo Piano, it will highlight something else. So the most important things is the way you interpret the reality. And this is the most complex things to learn. It's not how to do a project, it's how to look around you, how to get interested by everything, how to leave the present and understand that it's just a step for the future. And that this is the very nice part of, the, of the our job. Yeah, but we also saw the nice example of selling idea. You mentioned that you show cli client something that he needs to see. Uh, is that how did you learn that? Is that something you have to learn? Because it's uh, for for me, it's I very give you the answer, very similar like uh, advertising. I mean, it, I think uh, architecture is really about uh, language. Um, there is something very specific. Uh, that probably happen also with cinema and movie. It's the fact that to, um, uh, to make a project exist, you should know how to speak with a very, very, very different people. From the politics to the uh, worker, passing by engineers, going out uh, with, uh, I don't know, um, whatever is the contribution that we will, uh, it will be asked in a project to exist. Normally there are 2,000 people that you cross from the moment of the sketch of the idea until the construction at the end. And so the way you have to, that's why it's really s like a filmmaker, like you are the only one that has the complete picture. The, the architect or the studio of architecture is the only one that knows without knowing but feel which is the direction where you have to go to build up this image, Lenka was mentioning before, is the one that you did for the competition or whatever is the things that you have done and you want to go. So to do that, you have to say to the politician, just you have to take the part that interests him in the entire picture because he will not get the entire picture. So it's just how you, l and this is something that, that we learn and I still learn Day by day, it's pe uh, even the drawings. I don't know, you are, you are not architect, I know, but the drawings, when you start, you know, you do a sketch. I mean, I don't know if everyone do a sketch, but imagine that it's a sketch. A sketch can be understood by everyone. Then you, you, you go up in scale and you end up with the details that can be read just by few ones. So the moment you select the information from the sketch to the details, you are constructing a language. So this idea of how to speak, how to communicate. Communication in architecture is a big uh, misunderstanding. People think that communication is the way you get clients. No, it's, for me it's an entire world of how you make those projects real. And the only way we have to make it real, and this is from Bernini, Borromini, Leonardo, 
and whatever was the architect, is the moment where you can speak with everyone and you can make them coming on the same boat than you. That's very complicated. Yeah. Uh, do we have another question? Someone? There? Yeah? In the first row. Um, hi, I really found your work very inspiring, first of all. And um, my question is that you spoke about how cities have become so dense. Um, so my question is that how, and you also spoke about having voids in your project, in your first project where you had vertical voids. So I wanted to ask that in such a dense city, like I come from Mumbai and I know how dense it is, how do you introduce voids for in, in such a thick infrastructural you know, I, I'm just coming back from India and it was my first time. I was there uh, a month ago, even now, three weeks ago. And all my conviction in what I know, they've been destroyed of one week in India. So I have no idea how you have to do in your country, but it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, it's, we are all, I was in, um, in the north, so I was Delhi, Chandigarh, Jaipur, Udaipur, blah, 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 and Delhi. And when I was in Delhi, I was going to Agra, and through this uh, path, I stopped to see those cities that they are ongoing and they are busy. And I felt very small as a European, even as an American, if you want to, because I teach in New York, I know how they, they think. But the, all the effort we are doing, you are doing the opposite. I mean, it's totally crazy. When you go out from the city, you, I mean, you can see those big burning bricks with all this black smoke, those million of cars everywhere, people that use the klaxon. There is no logic of how people drive, but they, uh, there are no accidents. I mean, I, I, I mean, oh, you don't see it. There is, I mean, they build cities which are totally unoccupied, very high, very large, very big, and they just wait to switch on the things. And all this effort we do, you know, to, I don't know, in Paris, for example, you know, we, now we, we walk around with this, uh, how you call, uh, trottinette. You know, this, uh, I have seen it. It's the same company here. You know, this, this thing, like a skate with a, a scooter. How do you call it? No, no, no. You, like mean, you mean electric scooters? Yeah, the electric yeah. scooters. And it's like all the effort we do. I mean, I found that thoughtful. You know, when I was teenagers, I was thinking about Harley Davidson, a dream of the uh, bed and blah, blah, blah. And now you saw those guys like that. I mean, it's like, it's a strange world, but everything is for this fight of saving energy. When you go in India, it's like, you know, guy, the sky is the same. And you go there and you say, wow, they are 22 million in Delhi, just in Delhi. And there are how many people in Mumbai? And it's totally crazy. So I don't know if there is literally about how you create void. For me, it's how you decide to embrace the same fight than the rest of the world. And I think that this, that's, that's still, I mean, I was very, I was back and I said to myself, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just changing the garbage in three color and I do every day this huge effort. And then I was there, and the guy, you know, is like 200 chimney with these black things there. I mean, it's very crazy. But saying that, when I'm saying that, which is, was just my shock, no, I think that the, and then every culture used the void. You can rewrite the history of architecture just reading how people use the void. You know, I come from Naples, which is Mediterranean, and we know we, we use courtyards with. Uh, balcony, terraces, I mean, everything what is unbuilt in a very specific way. And there are rules on this void which are not right, but which is, are part of the culture. In India, it's the same. I mean, you have, you know, between the palace and the, the composition of these small villages, one on top of the other, there are specific typology of void which are very fascinating. 
So before you understand which is the best void you can design to a low density to exist, the question is, where are you building? Is the, co the society, you know, when you do in, uh, this is fantastic, in when you work and you go in the Scandinavian country, you know, you arrive and you have those fantastic shared place, perfect, which work, they work. But you take the same one, you know, there is, uh, the, you know, the Archangel's building, you know, the one uh, in Terrace is like that. We have the same in Naples, the same one. He has been built in the 60s. Have you seen the city Gomorrah? That happened in those buildings. I mean, the same typology in, in Denmark, it's like, wow, everyone goes out and take the kitchen and they share everything. In Naples, they kill one each other. And uh, so the way you share things, it's completely rel related to the culture where you come from. And the distance between things, you know, it's very nice where you know, your neighborhood is like you. When you go in those countries, Scandinavian or even in Holland, you know, the fact that everyone showed themselves in the window. Because they are, no, in Holland, no, but more in Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, they are almost all the same. I mean, the, there was not an hybridation. Like in France, we have problem with ex-colony. The France doesn't assume that uh, there are still three million people coming from the Arabic world. So they, it's like there is this, this conflict of things related to identity that you have taken account. And in India, it's the same. You have, I don't know how many religions. With 25 religions, you still uh, uh, on war with Pakistan, which is totally crazy. I, I mean, uh, and there, those things become architectural things, become the way you use the void, and the way that you own the property. Okay. Very long, eh? uh, OK, we have uh, time for one last question. If anyone is interested in something, yeah. So uh, my question is about uh, architecture itself, uh, about uh, how many people work there, and the ratio between uh, the architects with uh, some experience and students that are right after the college. In my office. Yeah, in your office. Um, so first of all, we have a fantastic new office, which has oh, changed my life. You didn't show us a picture. We no, I didn't. I, I was not ready for the lecture, but it's really new. It's since December, and uh, and we build it for ourselves. So it's let me pass the word. It's actually good. It's very very good. So I and uh, we are fifty, and it's uh, it's very nice because we are challenging ourselves in uh, how we can move on in the way we work it, and we're working the new way to work now that we are over connected, over. Uh, uh, fastest. Uh, I mean, we literally we have like uh, like here now we have we have rooms with screen and and we work with other country and even France to France. It's uh, everything is changed. So I, I, we made up social space where people meet. They they we have a chief that come every two two twice a week to make ch kitchen for everyone. So there is a new spirit which is very nice. We are fifty at the end and. Uh, and then there are there are every time I'm turning over of t ten interns, something like that, and uh, and this is like the studio part. And then myself, I'm uh, I'm really aware to to find a place outside the studio where where I can. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm not the chief, and second of all, I can be uh, on straight contact with the reality. And uh, the schools are incredible for that. Even uh, the the naive way student comes, even the naive way student uh, uh, sometimes surprise you with a question. Even the the thematics that you decide to approach with with uh, with them is amazing. In the way you 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 still challenge and you still learn. So it's very important. And then we had and now we are opening a, a research center. Uh, which is uh, just specifically for uh, uh, urban research. And uh, the first one will be uh, on a book on the post-rational architecture. And uh, we will see what happens. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, if there's, there are no more questions. Uh, yeah, there is another question in the background. So uh, we have time for that. Thank you. Sorry. Um, 
I just wanted to say I found the presentation very interesting and your project very, very inspiring. But my question is not really about the presentation. Um, I just wanted to ask, are you hiring uh, interns for this summer? <laughs> That's the good question. <laughs> um, we, we hired the intern, but the minimum uh, period is six months. So we don't do, we don't do summer internship just July August because uh, you will not learn uh, whatever is the things to learn and you become just an object that people use. So for the internship, uh, we estimate after all this time that the w that first of all we have to pay intern and and we did that from the beginning. And second, when they come, it's really like uh, um, for me it's the idea of it's the old way or the old school way to see how we live. So they, it's not me that select the intern, it's the different teams in the office, they select uh, the, the interns they want, and it's really like uh, he's the intern of one person. It's not the intern of one project, it's the intern of one person. And so it's a direct connection between, and many of them, let's say 70% of them, once they finish the study, they come back and they work in the office. So it's very like, uh, I believe in that. I believe in the, the, the pedagogy, but it's minimum six months. Thank you. Yeah. I think become thing that people use is amazing definition of short-term internship. It's really, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's all. Please. There's another question there. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, there's another, oh no, sorry, sorry. Hello? Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, just one small question. How can you manage to do all the projects, have 50 persons, uh, you know, do the university things and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> how old uh, I think I am? How old do you think I am? 34. Huh? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I don't know. I, I guess that's not the right uh, question. No, to, just, just to ask after uh, my question. You it's know. probably the answer. I've right? really? lost. <laughs> I, no, what, no, was the, what was the game with the questions? I, I forget that. No, I mean, there was a, the, it's a, honestly, it's a passion, first of all. Mm -hmm. And I decided to teach when I felt that the office was uh, able to allow me. So I teach since uh, only four years. Mm -hmm. I've done three years in Colombia, one in the, in the EA. And the office was already like processing. And then I have a partner, which um, is Benoit, and, uh, and, and we are also partnering a few people in the office. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but still, I work 20 hours a day. So it's, it, that's the secret at the end, I mean, just work. So and I, I will just extend the question for one thing, like what's your, what's, what do you feel in this new project uh, if you start like as a small company, then you grow up? How did you like feel about, uh, let's say, your signature to the project? What's what's yours on the project? What do you feel? Mine um, of Umberto. Like what? What's your how to say? I, I don't. I'm missing the word for yeah, the identity of yours. What do you keep like related to my person or related to no, the? No, no, no. I, I think if if you look at the project, you know, if you have 50 persons, everybody's working on that. And so what what do you feel as your contribution? That's the word contribution to the project. I mean, the, um, we literally, we are not like OMA. Like there is, uh, uh, at the end of the end, for the moment, everything comes from me and Benoit and few other people at the beginning of the project. That they are the same since ever. And, uh, and it's, um, it's not a pyramid, but if you want, there is a system of a relationship where you have to be updated of whatever happened in the office. So I still have the control of all of them. Then there are things where at certain point you trust someone and you said, okay, I'm sure that this one will be done like that. But for, for example, in this moment, we are challenging ourselves to refine uh, the, so we do, for example, since uh, the new office, I'm doing a workshop, which workshop where I am four days just in one project without taking any meeting, without doing anything. And these four days are very intense and they are the same like they were before they were ma one month if you want, but I have more experience than before. And the, these four days, it's, um, they are amazing. It's why we do that at the end. 
So no, no, it's still totally, I mean, a, a, but anyway, a project is 2,000 people. I mean, there are 15 in the office, but there are people outside that they have the same level of contribution that, that you do. You know, we are doing these grand palais things and we work with, I don't know how many people, like the, the meeting are 80 people. You know, I arrived to the first meeting, there were 80, and I said, people that don't have to say something, can you please leave the meeting? And at the end, we were five. <laughs> and so, but then with the times, they start to get the point. But I mean, a project is a contribution of many, many, many energy. But still, I mean, all of us, and I think if you ask the same question to the people in the office that design or draw, they will say that they are, I, I mean, I hope, they will say that they are totally in. So I still totally in. Long answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your questions and thank you for your amazing presentation. Thank Please. you. Já vám moc děkuji ještě jednou za vaše dotazy, moc děkuji za to, že jste přišli, byli jste skvělí. A taky vás chci upozornit na tu výstavu, která tady teďka ještě probíhá, takže pokud budete mít příležitost, určitě se ještě během května zastavte, bude tady probíhat doprovodný program a určitě se brzo zase setkáme na Urban Talks, protože další zajímaví architekti zase přijedou. Takže dobrou noc, mějte se krásně.